Hello there everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about two very recent and exciting One Piece events. These were pretty big tournaments in Thailand. Let's go ahead and get started. So we've got two top eights to go through. Both of these were 200 plus man events, so uh, I'm pretty excited to see exactly what has been going on. Let's start here with our 8th place list here, and as you can see, it is Zoro, and I think this is fairly unsurprising. Zoro uh, is one of the easier decks to play in the format, uh, uh, not to obviously knock on the skill of anyone who's going top 8, obviously you need to be good, um, but it is one of the easier decks to play, it's easier. To, it's fairly easy, to, uh, relatively easy to pick up and understand the game plan, uh, and... It's also very, very effective. Uh, I, I think like um, it's it's a lot less prone to bricking. I think as well, like it just has that uh, strong consistency, uh, in my experience. Here, uh, I think the big things to point out uh, beyond uh, obviously a lot of the very, very powerful cards is um, like the, the obvious power cards. I should say so, like your three drop Zoro, your five drop Luffy, uh, and nine drop Shanks. I've seen a lot of lists playing more uh, than just the one actually. Uh, is the fact that it's playing Round Table, uh, Jet Pistol, and Otama. I think uh, I, I always want to highlight uh, when a deck plays these because it's really important to have the outs uh, to like uh, to these crazy big power cards such as a drop kid, um, which obviously kid has fallen off a fair bit ever since the introduction of the film uh, starter deck. Uh, thank you very much uh, as a blurple player, as a blurple enthusiast. I'm very happy to see uh, that come out. But anyway. Another thing I want to talk about here uh, is the the whole event lineup. Honestly, I, I find very very. Uh, very good. Uh, I, I love the inclusion of Radical Beam. I think, um, you know, the more people have played, the more they've realized that card is kind of crazy. And also, Diablo Jumble. Diablo Jumble? Diablo Jumble. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, Sanji's Kickfire. Uh, that card is really good. And I think um, now that people have realized that, oh, blockers are pretty, pro pretty uh, prevalent, we're, we have been seeing it getting included in a lot more lists. So I'm glad to see it here. Next. Uh, we have the 7th place list, this is Mono Purple Kaido, uh, and we're seeing, you know, this is a fairly standard ramp list. Uh, kind of surprised uh, to not see any Douglas Bullet here, but I think, um, you know, this is a much more standard kind of list. Uh, more more 10-drop Kaidos than I was perhaps expecting, but, you know, it's playing um, playing the 2k counters, it's playing um, the 2-drop uh, counter blocker. Um, playing two of them actually, so playing a lot of blockers here, a lot of cheap blockers in this deck. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's got the uh, all the ramping. It's got Uta, um, which is obviously proven to be one of the strongest cards uh, to be released uh, in that solid deck. So yeah, I think this is a very solid list. Uh, I'm shocked at the the sheer quantity of kings. Uh, I typically I've seen decks tend to be playing less. That there's a, there's a very strong top end on this deck, um, but of course it ramps very fast. So um, it's unsurprising um, that there there would be uh, that many. Okay, next is the sixth place list, and we see another purple Kaido, um, and you know a very very similar list here. I think the main thing to say is though um, this is this list is playing Basil Hawkins, the uh, card that ramps, as well as the uh, Elephant Marchu uh, four drop event to ramp as well, um, and it's basically found that space by cutting a few of uh, cutting bits and pieces of the top end. It's also playing some big vanillas here, and I think. We shouldn't be, uh, when this game comes out in English, and obviously people, more people are playing, don't sleep on the power of these vanillas. They're, they're really, really good. Uh, and, you know, don't, just because they're vanillas doesn't mean they're bad. So, next up is the fifth place list, and that is going to be a kid deck. So, uh, unsurprisingly, you know, we're still seeing kid popping off. Um, you know, I, 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 I think everyone knows why at this point. Um, and uh, I, I, I assume uh, these upside down cards are borrowed cards. So is there anything particularly interesting to say about this? Um, arguably no, because you might point to the Apu and say like, oh, well, more 2k counters. However, um, we have been seeing Apu actually get used more and more as uh, events become more and more prevalent, as people are actually <laughs> leaving those kind of dons open. Apu can be really, really good in actually letting you secure a kill turn. Uh, or at least uh, letting you do a lot more damage than you uh, previously would be. So we're seeing uh, Apu actually get like uh, much, much better. Now, obviously, uh, the other interesting thing about this list is seeing uh, the Hawkins and the Seven Drop Kid. I'm a massive fan of Hawkins. I think that card is really, really strong. And actually, there was a ruling with uh, Hawkins and Uta, which has basically ruled that um, Uta activates first, so Hawkins will restand itself, even if like so Uta can't like rest the Hawkins uh, in response, like well, after it restands itself with the ability, which is a massive deal, right? So that's like a big buff for Hawkins. So uh, yep, nice little buff for Green with how prevalent uh, that deck is in the format. Unsurprising to see. Uh, this deck uh, doing really well and coming in the top 
uh, eight on to the top four bit of a spoiler there the uh, for the champion uh, deck card fourth place we have another kid list here um i would say this is uh, another you know fairly standard one um any main things to talk about here is the uh, the the promo uh, yamato there uh, seeing some play which is cool uh, next up is the third place list, and it is another kid list. So obviously, kid. Uh, oh, spoilers! Uh, kid doing the most, you know, as usual. This deck is incredibly powerful. I think this might be an identical list to the uh, fifth place list as well. Um, seems really, really similar. Uh, yeah, very, very similar. So I mean, yeah, like uh, this is one of the best decks in the format. Absolutely, one of the ones to just like start playing straight away because it's going to be really, really good in the English format. Um, when we get it, but yeah, I uh, unsurprising here, uh, not a huge amount to talk about with this. Second place, we have got a blue Kaido deck here. Uh, sorry, blue, a purple Kaido deck here. Uh, and yeah, not a massive amount to talk about here. Some interesting one offs, um, and it's and uh, playing some uh, different top end and the uh, Buena, Buena Fista. Uh, yeah, Buena Fista uh, card um, to probably. I'm not actually 100% sure what a uh, film card uh, that searches outside of itself if it can add itself um but it's just a 2k counter uh, doesn't really need to be played um and obviously the card i'm really excited about uh, that seeing play here is the uh, eight drop kaido there i think that card is incredibly strong um the fact that you basically get back a active don every single turn is actually really really good don't sleep on it um and you know it's 9k it's basically never getting removed except via effects and then finally the winning list here this is the winning first place purple kaido deck uh, and uh, the only one playing Douglas Bullet, I'm willing to bet that it <laughs> contributed to its victory somewhat. Um, I, th I just think this is a very, very strong list here. Um, I like seeing the Fukurokuju 6-drop uh, vanilla. Um, that has been really, really strong in my testing. Uh, obviously, Douglas Bullet is an incredibly powerful card, abusing the fact that this can play 10-drop Kaido um, to really great effect here. Uh, solid events lineup, good, early, uh, good cheap blockers for early on in the game, good ramp. Um, you know, playing the Uta, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, uh, and, and most importantly, playing uh, far more copies of the 6-drop kit than the 7-drop kit. I think this is a really, really solid list. If you are, uh, you know, looking for inspiration on what to do with your Purple Kaido decks, uh, I would go to this, first of all. Um, obviously, you won't be able to play Douglas Bullet immediately in the English format, but this is a good one to keep an eye on. So, this is the first of the two tournaments, and this was 223 players. Next, we had a 200 and I believe 13 player uh, event here. Uh, so let's go ahead and go through this one. And we are going to uh, sort of uh, go through this one a little bit faster. So uh, in eighth place here, we have a kid deck. Um, obviously, this one looking really, really good. I think that may have been the same as uh, one of the previous ones. Uh, in seventh place, we have got a purple Kaido deck. Uh, again, this list looks pretty good. Um, I like seeing the uh, six drop for Kroger Juice. More ramp in the uh, two drop Uta. Um, so interesting, uh, sorry not Uta, to drop uh, ulti, so interesting to see uh, that getting played, and uh, interesting that there are no 10 drop Kaidos, um, I'm not sure if I'm a massive fan of this, but fundamentally purple is very very strong. Fifth place, uh, sorry sixth place, blue, let's go, finally some blue, uh, blue is one of my favourite colours, probably my favourite colour to play in the game, so I'm very excited to see this, this is a Doflamingo deck, and uh, what has basically become clear is um, you don't really need to use Doflamingo every turn. In fact, uh, if you get maybe two to three cards off it, it's probably enough um, to really sustain you. Uh, the, the ability is kind of just good at all stages of the game if you can set it up. You know, like late game, it's giving you advantage very cheaply. In early game, it's, you know, putting bodies on the board when you need to win board. So it's just a powerful ability at all stages of the game. Uh, I love seeing the 7-drop Doflamingo here in, uh, in Force. That card is really, really strong. Uh, you know, fundamentally... Uh, because of summoning sickness in this game, if you bounce something expensive that doesn't have a good on play, uh, or even like, even if it does have a good on play, but it's not something that they'd be able to take advantage of, um, you set your opponent back a whole turn if that's all they did. And that is a lot. Um, that is a, a hell of a lot to set them back by. And if they play the card again, you can potentially clear it on your next turn as well. So, you know, don't, don't sleep on that. Um, necessarily, obviously with, with an effect, uh, like a nine with 9-drop nine Mihawk or something, you can instantly clear it. But yeah, um, I think this list looks pretty solid to me. Um, yep, playing the, the main the main uh, good stuff here. Um, uh, interesting to see uh, Akuma has become a lot more popular. Uh, makes sense, obviously, if you are playing the Pacifista, um, then it makes sense to play Akuma. Fifth place is a, another kid list here. Um, and yeah, I think we've seen more than enough kid lists to know that uh, that deck is quite good. Let's move on to the top four. In fourth place, we have Purple Kaido here. Uh, another very standard looking list. Uh, interesting, though, the uh, that this deck is playing um, 
uh, Orochi. Uh, other things I like about this list are the uh, fact it's playing a drop Kaido. I'm a big fan of that card. Only one time drop Kaido, interesting, but um, yeah, uh, another very, very solid top end, uh, another really good list. In third place, another kid list. So, uh, you know, I think we've said more than enough about kid. Uh, cool seeing some Yamatos here, but yeah, there we go. In second place, Purple Kaido. Uh, this list, again, looking really, really solid. Uh, I'm, I'm a particularly big fan of the frog on the phone. Uh, and finally, in first place, it's Blue Crocodile. Oh, I am elated. I am absolutely elated by this Blue Croc. One of my, I, I, I love Crocodile, one of my favourite characters. Um, seeing this deck do really well is really exciting. Um, why has this deck uh, done really well? Well, I mean, it just, it's got really solid removal. Uh, it's exciting to see the Caesar Smile package actually getting played for once. Um, you know, maybe people have discovered that it's pretty good. Uh, there's not that many players playing blue, so uh, obviously um, this is something for the blue players to be trying out. Um, you know, we got the gym base to do that early game removal, um, and we got, you know, a good amount of accounts. We got the pacifist, uh, Santomaro package, which is really, really powerful. Um, yeah, I, I, overall, I would say this is a really, really, um, good looking list to me. And, uh, I'm really, really happy it did well because I will probably be playing it myself. But there we go. So that is two, 200. So this one was 313 players, two, 200 plus man tournaments. Uh, over the weekend. Uh, lots of lists to talk about. I hope you guys found this interesting. If you did, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel for more uh, One Piece content. Hope you guys are excited for lots more in the coming weeks, uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.